stacked over of just the, uh, the out of focus Billy's face and hers. Yeah. Are we good? If you could get at the at the top end, if you could get a little bit of that motion. Yeah. And we're gonna do the get out. Yeah. And change to the end. Cool. You got a half and a quarter. I told Kaylee and Billy this, you know, analogy when you buy, buy real estate, a lot of people think square footage, price, that's all they consider. Sometimes you consider the architecture. I've certainly done films where it's like, oh, five days for this amount, cool, cash in. But sometimes I consider the architecture. On this, please consider the architecture. I think we have something fucking special here. I really, really do. And once you see what they're gonna do on camera, it's fucking magic. Whole crew, Van has curated it very carefully. You guys are the best in your field. Please, hold my hand during the process. If you do, I promise you, I'll hold yours. I think we have something special here. Let's fucking crush it. I love every one of you motherfuckers. Let's fucking do it. Come on, baby. Yeah. All right, back to point. Back to one. Let's crush it. Settle into this, so finish your climb. And Billy, really you're looking back like, oh shit, he's coming up here. Ready? Here we go. And action. Say hello to Seema for me. Hello. I love this time of year. Classics all over the black car. But you better have a packed lunch and a full tank of gas. I mean, you can't get gas from Quicksilver about 12 miles in. So get in. Well, if y'all want to smoke him up on the way out of here, ain't nobody looking. You don't see no berries and cherries for me.
call, guys, at 7 a.m. pre-call for grips. Thank, Thank you guys Sound very much. Tone. Sound a little of room tone. Rock and roll. <laughs> we got, what, 19 more? Here? Cool. Dude, have you ever curled? <laughs> Think we got a curl. Yeah, yeah. Going again, by the way. Going again. I'm so sorry. No, you were no worries, man. Silver. Are we dead? Are you sure? The window is dead again? We're dead. Seven takes in, Mark. Got it. Okay. <laughs> action on the car, action on the car. After I read the script, I thought, Tissos is probably one of the funnest characters I've ever played. is going to be a lot of fun to watch. We make movies to be entertaining. The most important thing that we could do is entertain people because people are struggling left and right whether it's COVID or not. And people love to sit back and watch movies and we're going to give them a really good ride. I never really get to go head to head, toe to toe with uh, Sean uh, on the mat or in, in, as an actor, but this has been an incredible experience. This, this man knows a lot about acting and uh, he gives great insight to me. For someone who's been doing it for 30 years, he can give insight to me. I got the acting bug at my university. I took one acting class and I thought, all these textbooks, I can't read them. They drive me nuts and everyone else didn't have the same uh, experience reading these textbooks, but once I took an acting class, I knew that was my way.
Texas. I'm a steady cam operator. I'm gonna do my best to make uh, Terlingua look steady. We'll see. What kind of gear are we working with today? Uh, this would be the uh, Tiffin M2 rig. Uh, it is stabilized. Uh, it's uh, the latest, greatest, luckily. Hopefully it makes my job easier. Hopefully it makes uh, Sean's film better. Most important. Now uh, catch me if I fall, all right? For sure. Uh, Richard Linklater movies. I did Boyhood uh, for 12 years. That was the first time I had a steady, steady gig for 12 years, uh, three days a year. So it wasn't that steady. And then I've done a lot of Rodriguez movies. Um, most everything he's done in uh, the last 15 years. Cut. Let's move on. Working out, staying fit, getting a little workout at work. It's good for you. But uh, yeah, it can be a little, a little challenging in these conditions. How many, how, like how many pounds are we talking? This, this rig is about 50 pounds. 50 pounds? Yeah. With this nice light camera, it can be as much as 70 with a bigger rig. That's pretty good. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Well, and this is too bright. Well, I mean, it's probably as much as you think. It's cool. That wasn't what I intended, but it's uh, all there. This is a little nuclear out there, but up until this point. Thick and meaty. That, that's a movie. I mean, a B movie, like straight to video. <laughs> uh, I, 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 yeah, we got that. Yeah. Okay, let's go out and get a taut rope. Okay, Cat, get a taut rope. Taut rope. It's all one day's work. I am the art director for Frank and Penelope. What all kind of responsibilities does that involve? A little bit of fucking everything sometimes. <laughs> no, but mainly making sure that the uh, cohesive design of the production designer and the director can be relayed down throughout the rest of our team to make sure that all of those things can be realized and make sure that the construction team can create everything that the director and the production designer want to see and help them make sure that that can actually be realistic and happen. Any notable productions you want to talk about? 
Besides this one? I guess earlier last year I worked on uh, Seventh Day with Guy Pearce, <coughs> and that was pretty popular on Netflix. That was the properties master for that. Um, I had production designed four other feature films last year after that. One was for uh, Lifetime, called uh, The Single Mom Conspiracy. I was uh, on The Chosen last year as well as one of their, uh, I made some custom props and furniture repair and uh, things like that for them and do lots of their little artsy requests. It's a biblical one, right? Mm -hmm. So in here we have a real wood prop. And just in case we have any impact with any of our actors, we need a softer, this is still real wood, but it's balsa, which is a much softer material that you can even damage with a fingernail. So I'm making a replica of it so that just in case we have to have any impact, you have a much safer copy of it and then it matches on camera. How long have you been doing this? Uh, I've been full in the film industry for about five years. I've been an art director and a production designer full time for the past three years. And before that, I was uh, in theater set design and musical theater acting. And got pulled over into the film industry, and now this is what I do full time. Oh, I'm doing a little riggy rig on this door to make it fake hold together long enough. For a motherfucker to bust through it. I just have a few brad nails that are in here on this fake frame. So when he busts through on it, all those pieces will fall down. This is Harvey Hansen, Channel 52 Action News. I've been moved to weather, and today's report is. It's fucking hot. Fantastic. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm happy. Is this your first film since COVID? Yes, I, uh, it is my first film since, since, well, the pandemic is still in process, but I did um, actually a motion capture uh, video game in the middle of COVID last year in July, which was pretty intense and it was so COVID safe, it took us forever to do. And, um, I had one other job uh, playing Ted Bundy's mother in a film called American Boogeyman that will be coming out later this year, and that was just one day. And So yes, this is my wonderful debut back into the world, <laughs> and I'm so grateful to be here. Texas is gorgeous. Everybody on the film has been totally wonderful. Scene 45 Bravo, take two, Mark. Ted. Action. Sorry, I had to step out, Ophelia. I had a leaky fault that I had to bring maintenance up there to fix it. So, you were saying that you, uh, you left your husband when you met Ophelia at a concert? It wasn't a month later that he, he left me for the next young thing. Tell us a little about Ophelia, your character in Frank and Penelope. Ophelia, you don't know very much about her um, from the material. And uh, all you know, she's wearing diamond earrings, and that she met, she had was an adulteress that met her adulterer or whatever you call it at a conference. You don't even know what kind of conference it is. So it was very open-ended for me to develop a character, um, which was really fun, and I wanted her to be sort of this wealthy, somewhat of a rich bitch. And I mean, she has abandoned her children. I, I wanted her to be forever wanting to be youthful, hence the ponytail. And these were my ideas, which I feel really excited about as an actress to be able to bring to life something I thought about. Boo, motherfucker! Boo! Scare you? Yeah, you startled me. I heard you, I heard you There's one thing you can expect from me, and that's the unexpected. <laughs> he wrote me with this corpse, the special effects corpse. Who is this corpse supposed to be? Uh, I don't know. Is this Ophelia? Yeah. This is Ophelia.
I'll stop down and act accordingly. Roll sound. Um, Sounds feasible. Unless we want to spin that box so it's one shade lower, so it doesn't cast as long a shadow. She leaves frame, so give it a squat. Yeah. yeah. So if you, it'll be a shorter shadow. The other low boy. You like can even all make the it way lower. down. Yep. That's as short as we can make it right there. Okay. Nose is facing this way. Nose is facing this way. Yeah. So I'm looking at the back of the car. So in, in, editing. Yeah. Hood shot. Right. With the expanse, evil in the background. Crickets. 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 Cop car pulls to a stop. <laughs> Scene 6870 Alpha, take one, Mark. Uh, set. And action. Hey! Hey! Knock that shit off! Get your hands off her! We are behind the bumper. We yep. pull out. Yep. Sure enough, there it is. We pant, pant uh, uh, like a Dane or whatever, however yeah, yeah, you want yeah, to. Yeah. Boom! The driver's side door opens, yes, yes, but, yes. but he steps out, and then you see his arm, he's pulling yep. Mabel. Yep. He flings around, she's screaming, flings around. It's ragdoll, ragdoll, ragdoll. The car comes to a stop. Hey! Put, stop, stop, stops from the master, puts his hand on. As the cop pulls up, comes wide, frame left, yep. enters in behind the cop, Yes. Behind the cop, behind yeah. the cop, not exposed, bang! And he folds right here on the on the car. You okay, sweetie? Yeah. yeah. Okay. What kind of man puts his hands on a lady? You can't be pinging around. Mabel walks up, boom! Huh? What is wrong with you, boy? Okay, so I play Mabel, and Mabel is um, she's a very interesting woman. She belongs to a, a family cult. Uh, it's a religious cult that is a band of extremists. She's a very um, menacing character. She's very intense, and she really believes in what her her family cult believes in very strongly to a fault and she's um terrifying what nothing you got chiso's peg for sure hell if he was here uh, lightning would have come down from heaven and struck that adulterer dead on the spot i really enjoyed playing mabel so sean patrick flannery an accomplished actor. How was he as a director, first time director? Sean is amazing. I really respect him a lot and I admire him. And because Sean is such a, an accomplished actor, he understands actors. And he, I could tell that he knew what I was gonna be worried about as an actor before I was even worried about it. And even before I could say anything to him about it as a director. And he just, he knew. Um, it made it really easy, and, and it made it really easy to be directed by him because he spoke to me in a way that I understood. He made his vision of the film and each scene easy for me to understand and accomplish and give him what he wanted as an actor. to think at first of Sherlingua Cher because I looked it up and there it didn't seem like there was a, a whole heck of a lot going on in Sherlingua but once I got here and I got over the initial shock of the nothingness apparent nothingness there is some stuff going on and it's really actually a really cool town the people here are cool and there's a, there's the Big Bend has a lot of culture in it and a lot of history and cool stories and a lot of the sites that we filmed at have a lot of interesting sort of tales behind them and I was really into that. So it's a really cool town. I, I enjoyed it. I liked her lingua. Donna!
working with Jonathan Sheck, and I hope I'm not butchering the hell out of his last name, um, was really a highlight for me. Kevin Dillon was amazing too. Lynn Shea, I was fangirling on her the whole time. I probably freaked her out because I fangirled on her so hard. But um, Jonathan Sheck, what what a delight. What a delight of a human being um, he is to, to work with, just to work around as a human, but also as an actor too. Just mesmerizing to watch act. So, Brian Naylor played your husband. Was it love at first sight with Cleve? <laughs> Cleve. Oh, Brian Naylor. Let me tell you something. What an outstanding actor he is. Um, and what a delight to work with on set because he's funny and he's fun. And it was searing, effing hot out here in this desert heat. And it really would zap your energy and as a result, kind of your your spirit, and, and it really, it made you kind of in a, a crappy mood a lot of times. And then here comes Brian, and he makes you laugh. Everybody on set, he just lightened everybody's mood, and he was a delight to work with. But as Cleve, he transformed himself. He, he turned himself into a total character, and it was really amazing. Um, it was a really cool character to be able to work around, and to have him as Mabel's husband I think you, he created the perfect character because um, uh, Mabel does not like her husband. You know damn well the Lord don't work like that. We got to do his will. Frank and Penelope, you know, at first I thought it was just going to be like a horror movie, but it's not. It's a, it's a love story within a love story, within a thriller, uh, within kind of a, a hanger on the edge of your seat, what the hell is about to happen kind of movie um, that continues on being a love story after, afterwards, all the way to the end. Um. That's a wrap on Miss Donna Dick! Yay! Bring the whole film to great job. Right?